Sean here, and I'm with Liam from the Cancer Bats. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting this guy uh, last year at the Cool Tour. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get any good pictures, but uh, we did get an interview uh, when I was uh, doing something else, but I'm doing something better now, so we're going to snag this interview. Pick up where we left off. Pick up where we left off. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, uh, you, you guys have been rocking hard since 2004. Did you ever think you guys would still be rocking to this day now? Uh, I mean, that's it, yeah, kind of crazy to think back on. Like, when we started the band, we didn't even think it was going to be, like, a full-time thing. And then, let alone to be doing it, like, five years later, you know? I feel like the shelf life of, like, a hardcore band is a lot <laughs> shorter than that. So usually, you put out, like, one record and then you break up. But, uh, so the fact, yeah, we're, we're finishing, like, touring our third album, and we're, like, starting, I think, about writing a fourth is, like, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, it's going good. I mean, that's the thing. We never really had any like goals when we started. It was just to have fun and make music that we like. So that hasn't changed. So it's like, might as well keep doing it. <laughs> now, when your album Hail, Hail Destroyer debuted, you guys were on the cover of Current Magazine, and you also received the highest review, which was a 5K. And you were not. You were also nominated uh, for uh, Band of the Year uh, in 2008. Now, how did that make you guys feel? You know getting so popular it was it was really rad I mean especially like that our second record like Hill Destroyer really like picked things up for us like it seemed to be uh, it got a lot more attention and a lot of people got behind it and especially yeah like people at Kerrang um, really gave us a leg up like in England and, and in Europe and I think it almost like forced people to take notice everywhere else too they were like oh like this band just got on the cover of Kerrang so like in Australia and places like that we like you know what I mean? Who is this? So that was super cool for us, and that was where like things kind of again. I think like that was what like really got like more momentum going for the band as well. That's, we that's were, definitely one of my favorite albums that you guys got. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's like we love like you know our first record, and you know um, I love like the new album. But it's it's funny how like like that seems to be like our record to date that everyone is you know, really, like, clicked with, which I think is awesome, like, you know, I'm stoked on everything that we've done, so the fact that people are still just finding out about a Hail Destroyer, like, still just seeing, you know, like, the videos for this was Rocking Chair and, like, Hail Destroyer and stuff like that, um, it's, like, seems to just be, like, still, like, going and going, even though that record came out in 2008, so. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> now, how did it come about, uh, you guys appearing in Bring Me the Horizons video, Chelsea Smile? Um, we were just on tour, uh, at the time, we were, like, we were playing a show in London, and we found out that they were shooting that video, and we, like, we kind of knew them, like, we'd met them a couple times, and been friendly with them, and it was kind of like, we just want, you know, dudes to come out to the video, but we were also friends with, like, the other bands that were there, like, D's Nuts were on tour with them, and the Red Shore, who we had, we had played with both those bands when we were on tour in Australia, so... Um, so we went to go see those guys and to see the Horizon dudes, and it kind of just, like, that was almost, like, the beginning of our friendship with those guys, was, like, coming out to that video and hanging out, and then from there we started touring with them, like, all the time, like, we toured, you know, America, Canada, England, Australia, so, yeah, definitely become good, good friends with those dudes. Yeah, they're actually going to be supposed to be coming in town uh, with a date to remember, but I'm uh, pretty stoked about that show. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's <coughs> crazy. <laughs> now, uh, 2009, you guys were a part of a documentary series called City Sonic. Can you elaborate on that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, like, a really cool project that they did in, uh, in Toronto that was, uh, it was all about, like, different venues that, like, artists had connections with throughout the city, um, and, like... Uh, like Damien from Fucked Up did a thing on like one of our favorite record stores. Um, there was like a bunch of like way bigger bands like um, that did like you know all sorts of like classic like Tron venues. So it was cool for us to be like picked along with that, like doing kind of like the other side of things. So like Getty Lee talks about like you know um, this one like huge amphitheater like in Toronto that's like they recorded a live record. And then on the other end, it's, like, us talking about, like, this punk rock venue that, you know, is a skate park. It do isn't even open anymore, you know? It was just, like, a quick, like, DIY spot that opened and closed. So it was really cool um, to be, like, to be asked, you know, to be a part of that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was stoked. 
Now, uh, how how was it shooting your music video uh, for that Beastie Boys cover Sabotage? Is that, that the song you guys picked out, and why? Um, that was kind of like we picked that because it was sort of like to fill in a spot, like in between. Like we we finished recording the record in October, and it wasn't going to come out until April. So we were still on tour. Like we still had tons of tours going on, like throughout uh, that time. So we were like. Might as well do something. Do you know what I mean? To at least like be touring on something new. So we're like, well, it's a cover, so it's not really like connected to the record. So we're like, oh, we could do you know a video for it, and that'd be fun. We like doing music videos, so we shot that in like January, right before we left for uh, for the Anti Flag tour. Um, and we were hoping it would come out on that tour, but it ended up taking a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, that was the whole idea with that, and it was just something super fun to do. Now, uh, what's the inspiration behind the current album, Bears, Mares, Scrapes, and Bones? Is there a story behind it? Uh, the title itself is, like, referring to, like, the four of us, actually. So, like, those four names are actually our four nicknames. Um, and, I mean, the reason for that is, like, this is the first record we've ever written as, like, a, a four-piece. Like, we've always had, like, when the band started, it was just Scott and I. Um, so we wrote, like, you know, half the songs on the first album before Mike joined the band. Um, and then helped us finish writing the rest. And, you know, like, the second record, we didn't have a bass player. So Hail Destroyer we wrote as a three-piece. Um, and then this album, we finally have Jay in the band. Like, he joined in 2008. So it was rad to have, like, this actual member, you know, and, like, playing playing riffs and, like, bouncing around ideas. And, like, we got to hear, you know, like, the finish, like, what the song's going to sound like with bass and backing vocals and, like, everything. So... I wasn't having to, like, write parts with, like, you know, uh, like, an extra vocal, like, in mind. So that was kind of, like, the whole idea with that album was just the fact that this is what we sound like. And that was, like, our whole idea, too, with, like, trying to make it sound as live as possible. was, like, this is what Cancer Rat sounds like when you see us live now. You know, like, it's these four dudes. We play this loud. Like, this is, you know, exactly what you're getting. So yeah. that was, like, our whole idea with with that cool record. tour, you guys definitely kick some ass. It just sucks that because of the whole, you know, so, oh, yeah. so, so many bands on that tour, we just could not get a chance. We didn't get uh, live pics of you guys or War of Ages, and we didn't get to interview Bless the Fall, but they came back to Denver, so we actually oh, okay. got to interview them. Yeah, that that tour was awesome. I mean, just like you said, like all these crazy. rad bands. But <laughs> it kind of made for, yeah, such a crazy day. Like We played for like 20 minutes. We'd have, like, five-minute changeovers and We stuff. actually just did Under Earth the other day, and they, they re- actually remembered us. And like, hey, come on back Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It helps cool. that you're very recognizable. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to forget this ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, 2009, you guys were nominated for a Juno Award for uh, New Group of the Year, and also uh, this year for Rock Album of the Year yeah. at the uh, Juno Awards. Now, how did that make you guys feel? Did you ever think that you'd make it that far? It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, like especially getting nominated again do you know what I mean like it doesn't feel like as much of a fluke <laughs> um, but it, yeah it's like I mean it's super cool because it's like a pretty prestigious thing like it's in you know all the newspapers and it's like kind of a big deal in Canada it's like you know the, the people at your bank know what a Juno is do you know what I mean like they don't know what you know touring is or like any of that stuff like it doesn't make sense to people but within this reference it's just like oh your band must be doing something you know so it's it's cool for that sense I mean for us it's like it's funny because it's not what you're trying to you do. don't set out in your punk band to win a Grammy you know what I mean it's just like it's almost more like weird but at the same time it's cool to be like appreciated you know to know that there's people that recognize how hard we work and you know that we're actually doing something oh yeah now, uh, I've seen you guys labeled as a hardcore punk band with elements of southern metal, sludge metal, stoner metal, and death punk. How do you guys feel about you know being labeled as that, and what style or genre do you consider yours? Um, I like all those. I like uh, I like kind of having you know uh, a harder to describe you know musical style. I think because like for us, like we're we're all such big, big fans of music. So I think when it comes down to it, like. Yeah, like, I love stoner metal and sludge and punk and hardcore and, you know, death punk and, you know, like, you know, death and roll and, like, all this stuff. So, yeah, obviously, like, that's what my band is going to sound like. And that goes for all of us, like, you know, 
Like, we love listening to, like, you know, no effects one minute and then two the next and, you know, just whatever is, like, going on. So it's like, yeah, I, I could never play in just one straightforward band, I think. Heck yeah. Now, since the last time we talked, um, any uh, crazy fan or tour stories that happened since then? Uh, I'm even trying to think. I don't know. This tour's actually been, like, the fact that nothing crazy has happened. Like, we were kind of expecting the worst. Like, when we got, like, the tour routing, you know? Like, you get given the dates when you're supporting, and it's like, okay, we're going to go from, you know, Toronto to, like, Texas, and we're going to do one tour, and then that's going to bring us into this in Oakland, and we got to get across Canada in one week. You know what I mean? And it, it's like, you think, you're like, oh, this is going to be insane, and, like, it's winter time, and, you know, we should get, like, snow tires and this and that. And then we've done the drive, and I guess, like, you know, like, knock on wood, because we still have some touring left, but, like, everything's been really chill. Like, there hasn't been, like, crazy, you know, like, I got stuck in the snow today, but that's just Denver. Yeah, like, that's exactly. it, you know what I mean? It's just, like, I feel like it's almost kind of, like, kind of Um I will say the crazy thing, though, for us, like, being on this tour, this being, like, probably the most metal tour we've ever done in the States, and just... Like, despite us being the more punk band on the tour, like, going over, like, awesome every night. And plus you get to play with Pebble Driver. Yeah, which is <laughs> wicked. Like, for us, it's, like, it's rad to play with a band that we really like and then meet them and realize they're all, like, really rad dudes. Like, I talked back and forth with Dez about doing the tour and before we even went on tour, like, him just being, like, if you need anything, you know, like, them just being, like, the nicest dudes. Um, and like just getting on tour and getting along with them, but then their fans just being like super open minded, like super cool people, and just like really down and just having a good time, which is really refreshing for us because you know to come into a different scene that we're not used to. It's kind of like how we did, uh, we just recently did Guar, you know, there's Guar, the Casualties, oh, Infernian, and Mobile Death Camp. No way, so Casualties was the only punk band, yeah, 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 but they still probably went over great. Oh, yeah, because they know how to party. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to tour with the casualties. That'd be wicked. Yeah, Jake's a good dude. He said anytime that we wanted to come up and get tattooed at a shop in Jersey. Oh, that rolls. Awesome yeah, guy. they're all. We met those dudes in Prague, actually. Oh no, in Switzerland. In Switzerland, we were on tour, and they were out with our good friends, the Crumbums. And uh, so we went out and met up with them and like hung out like casualties, Crumbums, and Cancer Bats nice. all night long. I was like, oh, this should be a tour. <laughs> it should be. Definitely. One day. Something. One day, America. One day. Cancer bats and casualties. And the crumb bones. And the crumb bones. <laughs> uh, now, last but not least, uh, what is the future hold for you guys? You guys uh, working on a new album, videos, DVDs, tours? What can your fans expect? Uh, a couple more tours, not in America. We're doing Europe and then Canada, uh, April and May. And then we're going to be working on a new record. So, yeah. Definitely. Keep them going. Keep them going. Just getting better at our craft. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, hopefully the Casualties Crumb Bumps Tour. <laughs> or maybe I would love to do more Devil Driver uh, nice. in America. Like, this has been such a short... It was mostly Canada for this rip, so it would be, be bad to do the entire U.S. with them. Hey, you never know. You never know, at some point. Sean from Face Down here, if you haven't checked out Cancer Bats, definitely do it. These guys fucking kick ass. Liam, thank you again. Yeah, thanks, man.